Picture this, a critical vulnerability drops CVE 2025-29927, a Next.js middleware bypass that lets you bypass any authentication with just one sneaky HTTP header. 40 hour goes by, plenty of time for a security to slap a patch on, right? Well, not exactly. I scanned over a hundred thousand private bug bounty subdomains and a few dozen apps were confirmed to be vulnerable and over a hundred of them were just sitting ducks. Even crazier is that some of these biggest companies with massive security teams and budgets were unfortunately still vulnerable. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I hunted for this piece at scale, my distributed scanning setup, the exploitation tricks that actually worked, and the different scenarios that I came across. Plus, I'll even show you how some of these apps may look vulnerable, but in reality, exploitation may just be a lot harder than you expect. But first, let's dive into how I built the scanning pipeline to chew through 100,000 subdomains like it's nothing. Oh, and before we dive in, drop me the word automation in the comments if you want a live demo of my entire process, including setting up my infra, doing recon, and hunting for a specific CVE. And if you want to try this out, don't worry, I've put a lab together on hackingup.io. Go check it out. Link is in the pinned comment. All right, here's how I went down. I kicked things off with Subfinder using the dash all flag to pull all subdomains for every source I have in there. So think of Census, Shodan, C99, Virus Total, Security Trails, you name it. But the real MVP in all this is Axiom or the Axe framework. I use it to spin up 20 dirt cheap $5 digital ocean machines, just bare bone specs. But when they're all grinding together in parallel, it is a supplement trading monster. And by the way, I've got a link down below for $200 free digital ocean. Go wild. It would help me with my channel, but also gives you free credits to try these out on your own. Once I have all my subdomains, I unleashed Nuclei through Axiom to scan for this exact vulnerability. The whole thing from discovery to exploit verification was all on autopilot. Here is my detection methodology. I like to keep it very, very simple. Start with, I will fire off a request with the header xnextjs data and give it the value one. And then I will look for any responses that come back with a 307 status code and the xnextjs redirect header in the response. This gives us a massive list of potential targets that react with a specific behavior that is described as a vulnerable instance and all the blog posts and research that have been published, which now brings us to exploiting this at a scale. Now that we have all of our subdomains and all the vulnerable instances, we start to feed them all into HTTPX with a custom payload and a header that is a beast to design and bypass all the different patterns in one shot. This specific payload just covers all the possible scenarios, all the different methods for different versions, different structures, and all the edge cases. Also a big shout out to the team over at Asset Node for putting this banger together. Now that we have done this, we have to top it all off by automating a screenshot process for every response so we can just glance through all of them and see which ones are going to show us some sort of a dashboard instead of the normal login page. This is very important because if you don't do this, then you have to manually look for different exploitation scenarios and have to verify the vulnerability all one by one. Here is where it gets very fascinating. This vuln played out differently across a bunch of different apps, but these are the different ones that I came up with that I found interesting. The first one is authentication bypass, where it just simply allows you to see anything that you want. I saw a few cases here where I was just in what I call read only mode, mostly because these were just internal dashboards with data and no real functionality. I also saw a few different cases where I could also modify and insert new data. This one probably is the best case scenario. This is what we want. The second scenario was where I see the UI, it wouldn't let me fully authenticate. So I couldn't use the front end and I couldn't really do much, but I noticed the API calls were coming back as a 200 instead of a 401 that indicates we're not authorized. So I would just call these API calls directly and I could modify and see data by crafting an HTTP request of my own by reading through the JavaScript code. Scenario two is probably the most fun you're going to have because it requires you to understand the application. You need to understand how it works, read through the JavaScript file and just craft payloads that is going to leak some information. And the last one, which is probably the most annoying is that it will look like it's bypassing authentication, but I couldn't figure out any of the routes. None of the JavaScript files had any API calls on them. I couldn't figure out any of the web routes, nothing through the UI. These are the ones that I'm actually still actively looking at. And honestly, I think some of these have a secondary check where it looks for an active session, or maybe there is some cookie value or a specific header that has to be presented to it in order for the user to be able to interact with it. Now, here is what I've learned 
through all of this. I've never touched anything in Next.js before this. So I had to build a local app from scratch to wrap my head around the phone and it probably took a lot longer than it should have. But man, that hands-on vibe coding beat any docs and it really helped me create a really cool working POC. And honestly, with all these AI tools available today, spinning up a test app in a new stack is just easy AF. If you ever see a CVE, honestly, try creating it and replicating it locally before you even think about going for bug hunting for any of them. 150,000 subdomains later, what's the scoop? Here's what I really learned. One, critical vulnerabilities in big frameworks can sit unpatched for days, prime for attackers and bug bounty hunters like myself. Two, those scenarios prove automation is only half of the game. Knowing the vuln's quirk is everything. So you have to learn how the vulnerability works and honestly just understand everything at its core. Web application firewalls are just used as a crutch for too many to lean on and it's a shaky one. A lot of companies are actually relying on WAF to prevent this custom header, which is a completely different rant for another time. And last but not least, Next.js is everywhere, but it's honestly not a bug bounty ATM and context is king. So if you're chasing for this phone, don't just spam the bypass, peek at how the authentication ties into the app's whole stack. It's a difference between a dud in a winning scenario. And that is all the tale of me hunting for the CV across thousands of subdomains. So if this got you fired up, smash that like button and subscribe for more hacking videos. I'll see you all in next week's video. Peace.